create if he's not able to play? Well, first of all, I haven't seen him yet, so I don't know. Um, second thing is it gives another guy an opportunity. One guy's misery is another guy's opportunity. So whether it's Bryce, whether it's Damian, whether it's Lance, um, you know, uh, it may end up having to play key on more minutes than I'm. I, I, my biggest thing for this whole team is sub yourself. Take yourself out of games. This isn't eighth grade. Just take yourself out. And if you do, you'll tell me I'm ready to go back. And you go back in. And I wondered, uh, Myron Jones is on a hot streak right now. I think he made the seven threes in uh, Florida's last game. What do you think about his game at this point? What kind of challenge is he to contain? He's playing really well. And uh, I, I told the staff last night um, that one of the things that they are able to do is get on a run of threes uh, that spread out games. Um, I watched one game without, you know, Castleton, and I, 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 it's hard. So, But I watched it anyway just to see. Um, but they space the court. They spread it out. The guys that are supposed to shoot threes do. Uh, Mike's done an unbelievable job. They won their last four games. They're coming in here expecting to win. And that's why I come back to we need our fans. I mean, just to, it's so good to have fans in our building and have an impact on the game. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a big deal. Yeah, John, you guys are playing really well, but only seven games left. Is there any one area that you look at and you say, we still need to refine this. We need to get this better. We just – look, they – it's – I've got to keep this thing, um, like, and point out stuff that we worked all week on this, and why did you do that? The discipline of the game. When you get in a hard-fought game, you can't make a whole lot of breakdowns because they make you pay good teams. They make you pay when you have no breakdowns. But with breakdowns, it's automatic. So we've got to clean that up. Here, here's the challenge I have. We've got 24, 23 days left to the regular season, 23 days. Um, we've got seven games and seven practices before the game. What can you do the day before a game? You're going to go four hours, okay? So that's 14 days. You have three days off. That's 17 days out of the 23. So you have five or six real practices. Question is, Bryce, Damian, maybe even Lance need us to compete against each other and scrimmage and do that. Is that smart this time of the year? Normally I don't do it. I'm going to talk to the team about it today. You know, what do you guys think? Um, I just don't like going body to body and every game we play is a war. Every game is a rock fight. And so you're getting two rock fights, a practice or two. Is that enough to keep us climbing? We, we're not, we don't want to be this. Yeah. We still have 23 days. Can we tune things up and go? And can you do it without scrimmaging? That's the challenge I have. How hard is the whole process of peaking at the right time, not doing it too early? How do you control that? The process of what you do. How about this one? Tune up games. We have the third best schedule in the country right now. And now you guys know we got the gauntlet on these last seven. So my guess is we'll have one of the one or two, the schedule. So when you say we need to play more people, you know, uh, we play everybody. And so that's part of this, of what will happen and how we do it. I'm not, everything we do is geared toward March. We want to play hard games. We want to play teams that play different. Florida plays different. They press a little bit. It's more of a try to dictate the pace of the game, but they still press. They'll play a big zone, a wide zone. Great. We need to go against that. We're going to play teams that are going to come out and physically try to just manhandle us, push, shove, grab, hold, two hands around a guy trying to get open, flop charges. Great. 
you got to play every kind of team. So in March, nothing surprises you. Yeah, John, you mentioned this um, not long ago, but teams are obviously just camping out around Oscar as though to say you are not going to beat us on the boards. Uh, is there anything you as a staff can do strategically or is it just a matter of your kids sticking their nose in and helping? Well, other, I'm saying we're going to end up getting 40 rebounds. So even with what they're doing, he's getting 15. That's ridiculous. Okay. Do you really want him to get 40? Somebody else got to go in there and rebound. And that's why we're telling whether Jacob or Keon, their number one thing, if Bryce goes in and he doesn't rebound or they jerk rebounds from him, it's a hard game to play. I don't care what he does offensively. Defend and rebound, and you'll get a chance to stay on that court. Let the guards get you shots. That's what's happened for Keon. They are making the plays for him to get shots, and he's knocking them down because he can't. Bryce could be the same. Focus on rebounding and defense. But the kid, all that they're doing, and, and I know what you're saying, you're trying to be nice, but they're beating the crap out of him, and he's still coming up with 14. Sometimes there's two and three guys on them, which means where are the rest of you guys? Come on, get in there and rebound. Hey, John, in this particular, with this particular group of, of players, I mean, how has your advice about getting them their shots? I mean, how, why do you feel like this group is really responding to creating their own kind of offense and creating opportunities for themselves? Well, for each other, it's not. We're, we, we had 25 assists last game. And the way we play, um, you know, you're playing for each other. You're creating for each other. And if everybody's creating for the other guys, it's a fun way to play. Um, you know, uh, we play with two point guards, which means you have two creators on the court. Um, we need finishers. Guys, you got to make open shots, you know, and – don't want to hear the excuse. Let's go. Make open shots. You don't have to make them all. Just can't miss them all. And, you know, we we have a group that trusts each other, that has accepted roles. Hard in this game, man. Hard when you have really good players. We had six guys in double figures last game. Let's hope that continues. Um, you know, like I said, Damian, I'm, I'm, or Davion, I'm like, well, sixth man of the year. He is taking his role, and he's starring in his role. Um, Oscar is taking his role, and he's starring in his role. Now, Keon being more physical, rebounding the ball, taking the clutter so he's not playing with the weight of the world on his shoulders. All of a sudden, he's starring in his role. How about Jacob? He's starring in his role. How about Steady Eddie? Kellen, he's starring in his role. How about Ty Ty and Severe? I told Ty Ty yesterday, you got to come to us when you, you have plays you can make and we have to do something. I told Severe yesterday, the greatest thing for Severe, he has as big an impact on the game as anybody in it, even when he doesn't make a shot. Defensively, leading us, creating, breaking down people. He worries about making shots. Stop. It doesn't matter except to you, but it doesn't matter to our team. And when it doesn't matter to you, Severe, you're going to make more shots. But when you're feeling the weight of the world because I'm missing this, I didn't score. Don't. Don't. The impact that Anybody about basketball sees that he has, even when he doesn't score. When he scores, we win pretty big. Jerry, we'll come back to you. John, you, you, you may have answered this already, but you said on the radio show that this team's identity is set. 
and you just uh, you just need to repeat it, you know, regularly. That's it. This is how we play. What is the identity in your I, mind? I didn't say identity. I said we're established who we are. We're established the kind of team we are. We're established, whether it's on the road or at home, we've established that we're one of the better teams. It's established now. Now, let's see if we can improve on it. Let's see if we're playing against ourselves. And let's practice and prepare in a way that we're not satisfied. We stay hungry, yet we're humble. We know Florida can beat us. We know they're good. They won four in a row. They were they 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 struggled without the big guy. They lost some games. Well, he was out. What if Oscar were out? We'd admit we'd lose some games. So they're they're good. They can beat us. Uh, but speaking about Oscar, how about Oscar goes to a grade school where there are kids in town from the Congo, and they said it was off the charts what he did. Davion, I can go down the line. How does anyone talk down on any of these kids? How do you talk down on them? How about this? Talk down on the program? If you're a fan of this program, and maybe you're not, whether you're reading it or listening to it, how talking down? I mean, I I don't get it, but my thing is we have the greatest fans, which makes this job what it is. They're here for our kids. I can't tell you what I'm getting everywhere I go. I can't tell you what's coming in because this program is not me. This program, I'm in a rented seat. And if anybody takes makes it personal, that's them. But I'm telling you, our fans, don't listen to it, don't read it. Because it's about this program. This program is the gold standard. Coach Rupp did it for 40 years. Coach Hall. All the guys that followed him, the fans of this program aren't listening to that other stuff. And when these kids go do what they do, wow, it's big. We'll take two more questions. Chris Gabriel and then Daryl Hurd. John, just to follow up on Daryl's question about peaking, your Kentucky teams, almost with that exception, have peaked in March. And you did it at your other stops as well in Memphis and UMass. What was it like learning how to do that as a coach, learning how to make that happen? Because it doesn't happen organically. I, my, my thing has always been, and I'm, I'm winding it down so I can give away secrets right now, um, has always been fresh minds and fresh legs win at the end of the year. Fresh minds and fresh legs win which means we're not having two-hour film sessions, not doing it. I don't want to do it. We're not having four-hour practices, not at the end of the year. We are what we are. We're established. We're just trying to get sharper and more consistent, more disciplined. Most of that is mental. The other thing I will tell you is for the entire season, I do not make one game bigger than another. I don't. You know, any game we play, we play Louisville. Well, we didn't play them this year, but we're not making that game any bigger than Western Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky. Moorhead, we're not. Moorhead, by the way, has a big game this this weekend. Uh, you know, Coach Spradlin has done, Preston, unbelievable job. They got Murray. Um, so both good teams. They could get two teams in the NCAA tournament, by the way. But anyway, I don't build one game up bigger than the other. There's no Newt Rockney talks prior to the game. You got to do this. And we're sweeping the floor and jumping on stuff. I don't do any of that. This is let's become a machine. Everything is day-to-day improvement. Stay in the moment. Every game is big here because there may be some teams across the country that are winding it down. Let's get this over. Unless they play us, and then they say it'll make our season if we beat Kentucky. Let's go crazy. So every game is big. Daryl, finish your thought. Uh, yeah, um, from one sixty-three year old to another, happy belated birthday, which brings up the idea of this year seems to have reju- rejuvenated you. How much longer do you think you might do this? You were talking about you're winding down. You can give away secrets now. Well, 
Look, this has been so much fun. Um, the approach that these young people have taken, how they share. We got great kids, and their parents should be commended for the kind of kids we have here. Um, and then in this recruiting process, we can't get away from who we are and what we're about. Um, we can't sign guys just to sign them to get it done. This is different here. It isn't for everybody. That's not being arrogant. It, it, it's, it's a different uh, uh, way that, like I said, they, these kids get prepared for the rest of their lives here. And not just in basketball and everything. What they're doing away from this court in this town and where they can make a difference. But also basketball-wise, the maturity of this group, I'm loving walking into practice. But I've had, out of my 13 years, probably seven of the teams were this way. That we, we haven't had a bad practice this year. Now, I probably shouldn't say it. Maybe we'll have one somewhere, but we really have not. Please use the raise hand feature and we'll open it to next questions. Right. Go ahead, Nick Brown. Davion, how cool was it to uh, collab with Ghost on uh, on an NIL deal and uh, just to see how the landscape has changed to be able to even do something like that? Yeah, um, it's been great. Like. Uh, Ghost, uh, he did a great job and being able to partner with Richmond Road Vet Clinic, that was really big um, for both sides. Uh, Ghost really loves it there. And it's really just about a comfort thing um, and a match. And the whole partnership has been great with them. But I specifically remember like when I was, uh, I may have been a freshman in college. Yeah, I was a freshman in college and I had made my own shirts with my uh, logo on the back, like a little logo I had made up and my coach had and I had posted on Instagram not knowing any better my coach had brought me in and was like hey we got to get rid of those you can't sell those and now like just to look how times have changed it's just crazy so yeah, it's been it's been good on the basketball forefront um the way you guys were able to get six players and in, in double figures in the last game in the midweek game the way you guys are getting into sets quickly uh, and the ball not sticking around, uh, that's improved and progressed throughout the season. Do you feel like you guys have another level you can reach there? Like you guys have all said that you feel like there's, you know, five more double figures on this team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's – you got to pick your poison every time you play us. I mean, everyone um, is – can do something special. And, like, like I said, it's only been six of us that have – you know, reach that 20 point mark, but there's five of the guys that can 100% do it. And that's the thing about this team and the way that the coaches put it together. 
Um, when we all play to our strengths, it could be anybody's night. And uh, that's why you come in and you have a deep roster like this, but everyone um, knows their role and mesh together. I mean, we're really just now tapping into ourselves, especially being able to play um, big games on the road and being able to play big games at home. I mean, um, everyone's going to bring their uh, their best game against us. So how we, you know, fight back to that is, you know, really showing our character every night. Tyler Thompson. Hey, Davion. So Calipari said that he thinks you should be the front runner for six man of the year. What does it mean to you to get that kind of praise from Cal? And what would you define your role as on this team? Um, well, first, I mean, I appreciate Coach. That's, that means a lot to me. Um, I put in a lot of time. Uh, and, uh, you know, that that right there is, you know, uh, a bigger than me award, honestly, because uh, coming in at first it was difficult. And I had to, you know, have my teammates be able to help me. I had to have my big supporters be able to help me and let me know that, hey, um, this is what the team needs from you. And just for Coach Cal and the, the time and, the, um, you know, the energy that he's put towards me to help me really be able to define this role, for him to say that, that does mean a lot to me. And um, I'm just going to keep working. Um, I can't decide or uh, we can't decide who's going to pick that award, but I'd love to have it. And, um, you know, my role on the team is just to uh, what you guys see. Every night, you bring energy, um, make shots, uh, defend my guy, and just do what I can do to contribute to winning. Jerry Simpson. Davion, I'm getting old, so I hope you can speak a little louder so I can hear you. Uh, I'm wondering when's the last time you you came off the bench and and you know before this season and had sort of a sixth man role. Um. Honestly, is this loud enough? Oh, yeah, I'll come closer. Um, honestly, uh, I I came off the bench before in my freshman year of college, but it wasn't a six-man role. I've never had a six-man role in my life, honestly. Um, the times I did come off the bench, it was definitely uh, warranted, I'd say. Uh, uh, there was guys that were just honestly better than me at the time and uh, older guys in that in sense, but... Um, you know, this is my first time really being able to say, OK, my contribution should be accounted for every single game in terms of, you know, what I'm responsible for, like a true six man role. And, um, you know, I've embraced it. It's been a really fun role once you figure it out. And, um, you know, I look forward to going into every game and like I, I'm able to you know, see things that I wouldn't see if I were to start a game. But like I said, I mean, um, I'm comfortable with both things, and it's been really fun. This team is really special, and these guys that I'm playing with every day and these coaches, like, honestly, they're making what I do really fun for me. So um, I embraced it, and I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it every game. Yeah, this may be a stretch, but I wonder if you have, like, a six-man role model that you sort of, you know, tried to emulate or at least, you know, appreciate the role better through him yeah i mean um I, I wouldn't say i model my game after him but like just his role and the way he's able to come in and immediately score the basketball and come in and whatever he does he's providing you know uh something for his team and that's lou williams and how he made the six man cool like i mean there's rap songs about him there's you know he he really defined that role and he made it cool for a lot of young kids and upcoming basketball players to want to do like um, the immature person would laugh like, oh, you coming off the bench or, you know, but Lou made it so cool. And it's um, and it is what it is. It's a part of the game. Aaron? Go ahead. Try one more time. Do you got me? Okay, sorry about that. Davion, what, what stands out about what Florida's doing uh, lately? They've won four in a row, and what kind of stands out about them on tape? Um, they're winning games. Like you said, four in a row. Uh, they had their big guy back. 
Um, they're playing with pace. I mean, they uh, they have guys that are, you know, really strong. They're coming in and uh, out of the corners, back cutting. I mean, we played them before, and, um, you know, they just play really hard. They're coming into a, a really big environment, um, a winning team as well. So I know they're going to be fired up, the players. So um, as simple as that. We, we know that they're a really good team and they're capable of beating us. So uh, it's a big game for both sides, and uh, we're really looking forward to it.
joined by Carolyn Grady. If you want to go ahead and uh, raise your hands, we'll open it straight to questions. Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, Kellen, uh, Coach Cal was saying that, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'm messed up here. Sorry. Coach Cal has said that you guys have kind of established who you are, and it's just a case of being consistent with it and improving it. What is that identity, for lack of a better word, that you think you guys have established? Uh, I think we've got a, a very complete team. Um, and I think the biggest thing for us and, and what oftentimes leads to, to a great team is um, a team in which the, everyone is aware of their roles and their sole focus every game is to star in that role. And I think that we've done an exceptional job of that um, really since around Christmas, but it, it, I think it's especially progressed throughout the league so far. Um, I think one of the things that makes us dangerous, and I, I think I said this the last time I was here at the presser, was we've got five, six, seven guys that are capable of going for 20 each night. Um, but even within that uh, potential, we're still fulfilling our roles while doing so. And some nights, some guys get hot, and and the way the game goes um, allows for for one player to to get off a little bit, but. I just think for the most part, guys are, have really bought into to our team and, and to what the coaching staff asked of each player. And I think that's why we've seen the success we've seen. And I wonder, too, uh, Coach Cal says he's calling you Steady Eddie now. Not, uh, I wonder, not just him. Uh, it's the whole team now. So now i got to deal with that team. and grad dad. Um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, how do you uh, explain your consistency, your steadiness? Uh, I think in part it's a testament to what I just spoke about. I'm aware of what I'm supposed to do, um, what my role is. And, you know, after he called me out, he, he just said, yeah, you, you go in and you do your thing every game. And um, I think the coaching staff can count on me. So, uh I'm just I'm just messing up. Steady Eddie is fine with me too. As long as I'm consistent and that's why they're calling me that, I'm I'm good with it. Thanks. Questions for Kevin. Go ahead, Tyler. Hey Kellen, we asked Cal this. <laughs> you think the team can improve on going into March? Um, I think there are times where we can get um, a little sloppy with our decision making and, and our details. Uh, like in the South Carolina game, I think at halftime, I think they only scored like 13 points in the, in the half court. Uh, but we gave them a bunch of second chance points and points off turnovers. Um, and that can that can really come back to bite you as the season goes along, and, and stuff like that can frankly lose you a game in March. I think um, so, but I, I think that the thing where we can still keep our heads high with regards to that is that that stuff usually happens in spurts, and a lot of times if the media timeouts come in or Cal calls a timeout or, or we have half time to to regather ourselves, we usually um, correct those things and. and uh, end up doing well enough to win the game. So I, I think as despite the fact that we're doing so many things well as a team right now and we've got all our rotation guys have, have really bought in and, and guys are um, excited to start on their roles, I think there are a few things that we can um, touch up on and so we can have a full 40. Um, I think that's, that, that's the biggest thing we, we, we can try to continue to improve on. Anything else for Kevin today, guys? If not, we will let him go. Thank you all so much. We'll see you at rep tomorrow. All right.
That was easy.